Long QT, what is that? Prolonged QT syndrome is a uh, inheritable uh, problem uh, for the most part, although there are acquired forms of prolonged QT syndrome. And what that uh, involves is uh, that there's a, it takes a longer time for the heart to reset itself. Uh, the heart uh, uh, has a beginning phase where the, the charges uh, get propagated down through the tissue and then it has to reset itself. And in prolonged QT syndrome, the resetting takes, takes longer and it occurs at variable uh, uh, times throughout the, the heart muscle. And this sets patients up for having uh, malignant, dangerous uh, arrhythmias such as torsade de plan and ventricular fibrillation and puts them at risk for a sudden death. The problem with congenital long QT syndrome uh, occurs uh, in either influx of sodium into the cell or efflux of potassium out of the myocytes uh, and then prolong the action potential duration, which then gets manifest as this uh, prolonged, measured prolonged QT interval. Just looking at a person, listening to a person, could you really pick up long QT without a cardiogram? No. Uh, you, you can have suspicions that someone might have congenital long QT syndrome if they had uh, syncope, let's say, with or without exercise, uh, without any prodrome uh, of a dizziness that might, that's more typical of a, of a simple faint. And it, let's say they had a family history of a, a, a close degree relative who died suddenly with a startle or, or something in that nature, then you might be highly suspicious that something like prolonged QT syndrome. So QT could run in families? Prolonged QT syndrome, it's, it's a genetic problem, so by and large it runs in families, although spontaneous mutations do occur, so you may have isolated cases. But uh, by and large, if you find it in one family member, uh, you need to look at all the other uh, close relatives.